when you come across this situation where they want you to find uh, not really the angle, but uh, the angle that's represented in an algebraic expression, and they want you to find this x right here, uh, what you need to do is basically uh, make sure you understand what they want, take a look at the angle that it's part of, and then start looking around and say, is there another angle I can join this with and, and know that this angle is equal to another angle, or is this angle uh, able to combine with another angle uh, to equal a certain amount? And when you do that little uh, brief survey of the situation, normally you'll be able to uh, find an easy scenario to build an equation. And, you know, these two angles fit together to be 90 degrees, and um, that lets you be able to go through and actually be able to build the equation. So, you know, the one angle is 30 degrees, and then we would add the other uh, angle that is 8x plus 20 is, is what's representing that second angle. And we know together they're both equal to 90 degrees. So we just go through and we solve. and x would equal 5. We did what the question wanted us to do. If you ever wanted to find out what is the measurement of this angle, not what the x is, but what the measurement of the angle is, take this value and plug it in. Uh, 8 times 5 is 40, 40 plus 20 is 60. And that makes sense. 60 degrees and 30 degrees is 90 degrees. So uh, if they're looking for just the x, you can stop here. If they want the angle measure, just Go on through and plug that value in, and you'd be able to find out how much that angle is. This works for other scenarios also. I mean, if you had a supplementary uh, situation like this right here, you see that you know the two angles together would be 180 degrees. You just go and build your equation, and then you would just go and solve. And, you know, sometimes you really do... Uh, get to a point where it's got a decimal in there. Um, that shouldn't phase you. Um, but if that's all they want, if, if x is all they want, you can stop there. Again, if they want the angle measurement, you could take that value for x and plug it in. You'd find out how much this angle is. Vertical angles are the exact same idea. Just remember, though, that this angle on the left, that green angle, is actually the same value as the blue angle. And so when you build your equation, don't add them together. Vertical angles are actually equal to each other, so you've got to have the green angle equal to the blue angle. And, you know, now you've got that situation where you've got variables on both sides, but you, you should be uh, capable of solving this type of problem. And um, very quickly you'd see that x equals 2. Um, if you wanted to see... The measurement of the angle, you would take the, the x value, plug it in there, and again, you would get the answer for it. Let's actually take a moment to do that. Um, 2 times 17 is 34. 34 plus 3 is 37. So let's see if we get 37 on the blue angle. Um, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 31 is also 37. So indeed, we have two um, angles that are congruent to each other. And um, normally, when you see algebraic expressions representing an angle, you'll see parentheses around the expression, and then on the outside of the parentheses, you'll see the degree sign. So just wanted to fix that mistake that I didn't have in there uh, to begin with. But uh, that's the basics. Just remember your angle relationships. Remember how the angles fit together, whether they equal each other, or whether they add up to um, be a certain number like the complementary and supplementary angles.